how, how's the winter going, especially in light of the really rough summer that, that Gardner had this year? Um, it's, it's going pretty slow. That's the feedback that I've heard from most businesses. Um, I think the Mammoth Hotel closure is definitely a bit of a hindrance. Uh, we're very excited you know, for them to be back up and running, um, and we understand why they, they, were, they had to close this year. Um, but it's definitely been a, been a slow, uh, kind of rough winter around here. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that like the guiding businesses aren't as well, which also affects the hotels and restaurants. I mean, is it across the board? Yeah, from what I've heard, it's across the board. Um, we do have guiding businesses that um, may take a trip out every day. Um, some, but but those that, that can, a lot of them are just you know single person outfitters um, that are getting booked every day. So you know, of course, with having low overhead, that's helping their business. Um, and we do have some larger guiding operations that are still taking bookings and still getting clients. But uh, we definitely, it's definitely a slow, the slow time of year. And um, in, in light of the flood, it's um, even you know a little bit rougher to to get through. <laughs> Any idea why that's happening? Why is it that people haven't come back now that the access is reopened? I'm I'm not quite sure. I mean, we we do get calls here um, almost every day here at the Gardner Chamber in, in our visitor center, uh, and it's it's reassuring. People they do inquire about the road because they're planning for an upcoming trip this this summer, this springtime, which like I said is very reassuring. Um, but with with the winter being so slow. Uh, I guess I'll just be very curious to see how it pans out toward you know, towards the end of the winter when there's uh, when when winter's done when there's no over snow travel in the park and and kind of what our numbers are. It just feels very slow in town. Now this isn't the the first rough patch that you had. I mean there there was the whole COVID pandemic. We had the fire in town. Yeah. How how's all of this affecting the businesses here? Well, with the flood, it was really just the opposite of everything we experienced with COVID and the fire. Um, and in 2021, and in, in 2021, I mean, the, the parks numbers show it too, but we were so at capacity here in our town um, that it just kind of felt like we were being overrun a bit, a little bit with, within businesses. Um, we were you know, slightly understaffed, which is a problem across the nation, as you know. Um, but without having without the ability to have j1 visa workers too they play a very integral part in our town and so for in 2020 and 2021 we did not have um we did not have them and then in 2022 we felt very prepared we were able to have j1 visa workers back i know people um that i talked to in multiple dining establishments and even our local market um were really they really felt prepared going into the summer and then it was just pretty much wiped clean on june 13th and, and so on so um this is it's you know the other trickle down effect was just being so maxed out i think and um overworked here in town and then this just like i said it was really the opposite of what happened in in those past two years so where does that leave you did it did a lot of the the people who fill those job servers and things like that did they have to leave town or are you going to have a shortage now this coming summer um, I feel like we won't. Um, I think mo most places they they actually were able to keep on their staff. Um, in some places, their staff voluntarily left, but people are really committed to this town. They really love Gardner. Um, a lot of them, if people did have staff leave um, that left voluntarily, it was really because they were out here to experience the park and experience Yellowstone. You know, on the days that they did have off and without having that access for the um, for the entire summer when the road was under construction, um, that was really the only feedback I heard as to why employees left. Um, but yeah, it's I I'm I feel that we'll be prepared for the summer. Um, I think a lot of people will return here that have been here before, and even in light of what happened, because they know that our town is is very strong and very community oriented. Um, like I said, I'm not worried, but I, I guess we'll we'll see when we get there. So, what's your plan? What's the chamber plan, the town's plan for promotion going into the summer? Um, for promotion going into the summer, well, it's kind of funny. We we had really never marketed the summer before, um, just because we had we had the influx of visitors, we had we had the people here. Um, so now we're 
going to experiment with a little bit of summer marketing and some warm season campaigns um, within Yellowstone Journal and some major publications in those markets. Um, and then really just relying um, on partnerships with the state and with our uh, Yellowstone Country Tourism Region too and partnering with them because we're, um, we're really small. Our budget's very small here, um, especially for our CVB compared to other uh, CVBs in the, within the region. So um, going into summer, it'll really be relying on those partnerships as well. Mm. And, and you know, what, what's your outlook? What are you expecting? Um, I'm expecting a busy summer. I, I feel like 2023 bookings may be trickling in a little slower than they typically would be without this, without the flood potentially. Um, but I'm expecting it to be back to normal and um, you know, hopefully gangbusters come come July and June, and um, I I hope that businesses are are surprised. Uh, Mike, you know, you're I don't even know when was the last time that the hotel was closed in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Just for the construction. Maybe? It was during the the two winters that we were doing the renovation of the Mammoth Hotel. It was closed for portions of one winter season and completely for another winter season. Uh, but if you prior to that, you have to go back to the 1960s when there wasn't a winter operation in the Mammoth area. Wow. wow. So what's it feel like with the clothes this year? It's strange. You know, it's, it's great that we have visitors coming in and going down into the park. We have a lot of wildlife in the Mammoth area this winter. I think part of it's because there's just not as many people around. But it's just, it's just strange, you know, having lived here for over 30 years and having Mammoth open every winter pretty much and not to have it this year has been different. So, so what, what is the feel here in Mammoth? I mean, without the hotel open, of course, there are a lot fewer people in, but you do, do still have some folks coming up from town, right? Correct. And, you know, and people going out to Lamar Valley and out to Cook City for snowmobiling, we see a lot of people coming through doing that. And the wildlife watching, again, has been marvelous, not only in Mammoth area, but all the way out to Cook City itself and in Lamar Valley, so. And, um, and you, you do have, you've got like the gas station open, right? And the, the little store over there by the gas station? Correct, the, the, the gas station is open. I, I believe it's self-service pump, so it's not fully open per se, but the, the general store is also open, yes. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing some people come yes. through. And, yes, yes. And, and what, are, what are folks saying to you? You know, what are you hearing them talk about? Um, for, a lot of people are just amazed with the, the new road and again just emphasizing just the great work that was done by the National Park Service, the contractors, everybody who was involved in helping make that happen. The partnership it took to get that road completed and have it open so we could have visitors drive from Gardner to Mammoth is spectacular, just, just spectacular what they did. And people are just commenting on the new road, the different views that it provides, different areas you're seeing that you didn't see before when you were kind of down in the canyon and now you're kind of up above it. So just a lot of great comments on that. So. Oh, great. And what's it looking like for you for the summer? Are, are you getting a trend for summer bookings? We are. And we're, we're right now we're trending like a normal summer season ahead of us here. So, you know, there's a lot of questions about Mammoth and we believe Mammoth will open on time. Advanced reservations for next summer are excellent. You know, we, we have strong interest in Yellowstone. Again, we expect visitation to be normal for the coming year. There's a lot of excitement about the reopening of the Mammoth area. Uh, you know, the final stages of the completion of the wastewater treatment plant are currently underway and we hope to have those finished sometime here in the next couple of months, which will enable us to open Mammoth for the summer season on time. All right. Um, now, now, I hear from some of the folks down in town that you're running shuttles from town up to here for people who want to catch trips and the like. Correct. Correct. So we're trying to help out, you know, people with the hotel closed and there's no, no, no overnight accommodations at Mammoth. People are having to stay in Gardner, and then what we're doing is providing a shuttle so they can stay in Gardner, come up the hill to Mammoth, and then get on their snow coach so they can go into Old Faithful or Canyon for, the, for their trips. After the disaster that the summer and fall was for business, how are things shaping up for the winter? The winter is surprisingly slow. After the, the slow and difficult summer, we were really hopeful that the fall and winter was going to pick up. We were hopeful that when the park entrance uh, became open to the public that, that Gardner would see more tourism and that the guiding industry would really pick up and that has not been the case. Our winter bookings are down by about 40 percent from last year. Um, it's a difficult call to make as far as how much to prepare for a season of guiding when the phone calls are not coming in, the inquiries are not coming in. And do you have any idea why that is? My best guess is as a combination of things. 
I think it's a combination of a lack of awareness that the park is in fact open again. I think it's um, probably slightly influenced by the economy right now. And I think that the airline fiascos in recent times have not helped either. Right, right. And so from your point of view, what, what can you do? What, is, what are your options? So this is the first season that I have spent considerable money advertising and promoting my tour business. Uh, in past years, I have not had to do that. I started this business in 2017 and just through word of mouth, returning guests, um, guests visiting with their friends and neighbors and, and co-workers, that kind of word of mouth kept me in business and helped me, allowed me to grow my business um, to a point that I'm one of the larger tour companies based out of Gardner now. Um, with this year's uh, with this year's flood and the fallout from the flood, I have had to start a advertising, um, and that's a new, a whole new experience for me. Hmm. And is that helping? Can not that tell? I can tell. Really? As far as I can tell, the advertising money that I have spent has not helped yet. Wow. And what about bookings for the coming summer? Or what, are, what are you seeing there? The good news is that next summer looks good. Next summer, our bookings are actually up a little bit from what they were this time last year. Um, and so it's, it's still a bit of a mystery why folks are able to book that far ahead, but are not looking at traveling during the winter and visiting Yellowstone during the winter. And the clients that you do have now, what, what are they telling you? What are they saying? The clients that we're having right now, um, what they want is photography. They want wildlife photography experiences. Uh, the most common issues are, of course, the wolf. Everybody wants to photograph a wolf in the wild. Um, but also the bison. Frosty bison is like the number one request right now, which is lovely. We, we, we really enjoy working with them. Our guests right now are mostly domestic, but we are starting to see a little bit of an uptick in European travelers uh, and even Australia, New Zealand. Are starting to pick up a little bit and i think that's a slow increase after the pandemic and are your customers telling you why they're they're coming now or coming back now or are these regulars i think a lot of people have expressed kind of a sense of surprise that the park is in fact open everybody got inundated with the news of the flood the images of the roads washed away but that same kind of attention has not been given to the creation of the new road, the rebuilding of the old Gardner Road. So that, that progress hasn't made the news as much as the devastation of the flood. Right. Yeah. It's nice bison herd right back there. Love it. Nathan, how's the winter holding up? Well, it, it's been a ferocious winter in terms of the weather. Um, so. I don't know if we're getting used to that or if it's a new thing when it <laughs> becomes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I think we're hanging in there pretty well this year. Yeah. Business coming back? Business is a little light. Uh, I don't know if it's just kind of a hangover from the flooding and people thinking that maybe things aren't quite accessible yet. But uh, six months today i believe uh we had the, the the floods and and you know since then i think a lot of people thought it would be over a year or more till the park opens back up and so maybe we're still you know dealing with some people that haven't decided it's time to come back to yellowstone yet what uh, what do you hear from your customers that, that you do have coming back now what are they saying yeah a lot of the people I've been wanting to come to Yellowstone for years and, and they finally say, well, this is my chance, I'll, I'll, I'll go now. And, uh, and everyone's pretty happy when they get here. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, just a series of uh, difficult situations with the pandemic and the flooding have kind of led up to yeah, just a little bit of quiet winter. Uh -huh. You know, a year ago, we were talking about the wolves being killed in the hunting areas That's adjacent right. to the park. Um, and we don't have that this year. How, how does that affect uh, your people and your business? 
I think we're real relieved to, to know that uh, there isn't quite as much hunting pressure and, and trapping next to the park boundary this year. The state was pretty responsive in, in our pleas last year to lower the quota substantially, which they did. And uh, they're still, they still could take a few wolves, so we would like it to be even less than that. But um, we like where we are compared to last year. Mm -hmm. And your client experience is good this year? Yeah, real good. We've been seeing a lot of wildlife. Uh, it's been a tough winter. You know, a lot of snow has already fallen and seeing herds of bison down here by Gardner is a little different from some recent previous years. Wolf watching has been great. We've got some big packs that are being seen regularly out there, so that's going really well. Oh, huh. well, well, that's that's good to hear. What What's your outlook for the summer? Are you starting to get the bookings? I think we'll have a good summer. Uh, you know, we'll hold our breath that nothing catastrophic happens uh, as it's been happening uh, but I think the power of Yellowstone to draw people uh, hasn't dissipated and, and I, I think we'll see a lot of visitors to the park this summer. Kara, how's the, how's the winter business treating you? Um, it's a little different this year than in years past. The holidays were uh, less busy than in previous years but we're starting to see things pick up a little bit um, through the rest of January and February, and we have a few bookings when, in March, which is which is good. Um, so, yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> and how does this winter compare to other winters? Um, so far, this winter has just had a, a lot um, fewer visitors who are hiring guides. At least for my guide service, I've been talking to some of my my colleagues around Gardner, and they're, they're um, generally uh, having fewer um, privately guided bookings. Um, we do snowshoeing and cross-country ski trips as well, and those are actually significantly fewer compared to the last couple of years. Um, and I'm not sure really what the reason is for that. We are having a stellar snow year, um, so our snow quality and cover is just better this year than it has been for a few years. And um, I kind of feel like people are missing out. Um, I, I think that, you know, I'm seeing quite a, quite a few visitors in town, but it's, it, I don't have empirical data, but it does seem like um, there's just fewer visitors overall. Um, but I have noticed we've got a lot of the sort of small group tours. So the van tours seem to be actually slightly more abundant over the holidays than I've seen in the past, so. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Teresa the Chamber said that it seemed a little quieter yeah. this, this year. So the people who are coming in, what, what are they telling you? Why are they coming? Uh, do they have questions about whether it's open? Yeah, so I sent out kind of a, a year-end email to my clients. I do a calendar for them every year with pictures from Yellowstone. And it's always interesting to get feedback. This year, a lot of people were really confused about whether or not the road had reopened to the general public, um, which it has. Um, we've, we've been open since uh, the end of October. Um, and then certainly the, the flight cancellations around the holidays seem to have tripped up a lot of visitors. Um, and I've gotten feedback from a few visitors that flights are extremely expensive this year. Um, people who were looking at coming and then decided not to, or people who did go ahead and come, but they sort of had to shift their dates because flights were, were particularly expensive this year. Um, and then other feedback that I've gotten from kind of talking to people around town is, um, there was confusion about whether or not you could actually visit this area because the Mammoth Hotel was closed and their reservations got canceled and they weren't aware that there was transportation to get to Gardner and Mammoth and that there were alternative places to stay. And so um, it seems like that was kind of a missed opportunity for, for people to go ahead and come and stay in Gardner and experience our local hospitality and help our businesses um, maybe eke by um, through the winter because they don't have a they don't have the reserve that they usually have from a busier summer season right right so uh, trying to catch up this winter is even more important yeah or just like sustain you know just just eke by so that p folks can be here and and operate next summer when hopefully our visitors come back in in higher numbers as they tend to do
What, do you, what are you seeing for your bookings for this coming summer? Are they about where they were last year at this time, or better, or worse? Um, they're, they're picking up, certainly. Um, it seems like we're a little slower going into, um, going into next summer. So usually we have a lot of bookings in November, but again, I think because of the road uncertainty, November um, sales were way, way down. And those are usually people booking trips for, you know, the, the following summer. Um, June's pretty, pretty busy, but I'm seeing a lot more, um, sort of multi-day bookings. So fewer people, but they're coming for a little bit longer. Um, overall, I would say it's probably similar, but maybe a little slower than, than last year. And people are just now that we're into January, they're starting to make their bookings for next summer as opposed to doing it sort of late, um, late in the year. So, so running, running a little behind. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about, about how to address that? I mean, how to get people aware that things are open and that there is alternative, uh, lodging yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, and I'm only a biologist. I'm not a, a marketing expert, unfortunately. But, um, you know, I think that for for me, one of the surprising takeaways from, from the end of 2022 was reaching out to my past clients to let them know that, you know, hey, you know, we're, 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 we're open. Um, you're welcome to come visit us when it suits you. Um, that actually has, has brought quite a bit of, um, interest in tours for, for the rest of the winter and the summer. Um, and also just getting the word out to people. I think, you know, talking to you and, and having news coverage that like the roads are open, they're in good part. There's still winter conditions, but that new road is so nice. <laughs> Every time I drive on it, it's like, what a pleasure. Um, and, and so we, we are in a situation where a lot of people have put in a lot of effort and created, um, recreated a road system so that we can get back to accessing the park. Um, so now we're just um, kind of waiting for folks to show up and use it 